Well, you can see even with a point like that, Hadaj Maya wants to play aggressive. And, and this will be the challenge today because there's such a big, for me, contrast with these two players, with Serbus Tomo. Not as aggressive or doesn't have the weapons like Hadaj Maya has, but she's very consistent. And for Hadaj Maya, that will be a challenge. How aggressive does she play, but still keep those unforced errors in check? Solid start here for Team Spain. 40 -0. Always nice just to get that early hold. Try and settle some nerves. what she's going to try and do and uh, there Tomo just didn't have uh, any time to react straight away off the return was pushed off the baseline didn't quite have the time look at the beautiful footwork here from Hadaj Maya loves the forehand it's a favorite shot what an angle have a look at that preparation and footwork perfection Maya sending out that early, <laughs> early warning sign. What's going to happen with that second serve if it's not deep enough or good enough? You can already see how it can unfold yes, very quickly. Exactly. And Hadaj Maya right on top of the baseline as well. Short backswing, just firing it even through the middle. Just so hard to deal with that pace. Oh, a beautiful way to yeah. hold her opening service game. So it is Tomo, and it's one love, first set. Let's just have a look at the replay of this point. I mean, they're both very good doubles players, and we will touch on that as the match unfolds. Yeah, I really like this play, though, because it was not just the element of surprise. She came in quick. That was a nice angle to volley. But also, I like the serve into the body when you're playing someone as tall as... Hadaj Maya and I, I know her a little bit and actually went past her this morning and, and again I just forget that she's actually six feet tall she's very tall so when you're playing someone that's got that height and, and long levers you want to go into the body and jam them and uh, you know use that as an element of surprise so for, for Cerberus Tomo that's perhaps something today that she can throw in because she might not come out always you know, on top in those baseline rallies and, and uh, might get overpowered at times. So that was really beautiful to see that Certainly variety. That element of surprise. Yeah. Keeping her opponent on her feet. And we're fortunate enough to have court sign, Jill Krabers, former world number 39. Hello, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> it's very nice down here. You guys were talking about the weather a little bit earlier, and it's just perfect conditions, not a breeze, and really nice playing conditions for these players. It's perfect.
Did you talk about some of the results Hadad Jemaya has had in 2023? You mentioned Yelena, the semi final at Roland Garros, where she defeated players like Andre Burt, made the fourth round at Wimbledon. And then how about that end tournament, the WTA Elite Trophy, where she won defeating players like Caroline Garcia and Madison Keys. So she certainly has the game to defeat not only the power players, but also those finesse players that have that variety. And so you, you can see her game style and uh, she wants to dictate those points. But uh, look, she does. She knows how to come forward and, and use the drop shot as well. We saw a lot of that at Roland Garros. And that's why she's able to play on different surfaces. Has done, in fact, well on grass. Won two titles in a row on grass uh, in 2022 as well. So she's got different parts to her, ga to her game, different shots in her repertoire. This brings back memories of Roland Garros. Right. <laughs> well, it's the longest rally of the match, yeah. and we're only in game two. <laughs> and that's uh, the repertoire we talk about uh, from both. Look at that little half volley, but so much time of the anticipation, but also to improvise there and go with a slice. She was ready, good movement forward, stayed low, and just guides it down the line. Nice to see all the players up on their feet and the team captain. Yes. They're excited. I don't want to pace themselves <laughs> if we're in for three or four hours, but <laughs> good to see. <laughs> and there's that forehand again that we have witnessed so far early on and that forehand loves to run around and dictate off that side. But you see even that type of point as well. Look at the court position. It's Hadaj Maya right on top of the baseline, trying to attack, take time away. And Suresh Thomas, she will be a little bit further back. That's just the way that she plays and he's used to playing that way a little bit more uh, because she likes the clay courts uh, more. So this is the contrast I was talking about between the two players. Well, the favourite surface is clay. Favourite tournament is Roland Garros. And that's a little bit tentative for me right there. And that is that where Hadaj Mai, I think, for me, the reason why she has uh, tough matches with Cerebus Tormo is because it's hard to decide, do I stay in some of these rallies, build the point, but am I then allowing her to do what she wants to do and not taking time away from her? But if I'm aggressive, if I make some unforced errors, does my confidence go away? And uh, we've played, <laughs> we've all played those types of players. Those are decisions that you have to make on the court. A bit of pressure here now for Hadar Jamaya. looking to get him, isn't she? She is, and, and I think that that's what she's going to have to do. So this trauma was a couple of metres back behind the baseline. They're doing a great job of just defending and trying to keep every single ball in. But for Hadaj Maya, it's going to be a long day if she absolutely plays everything right. I like where she is inside the baseline, but this is now where you go, OK, what's the next step? And that's coming forward and taking a ball out of the air and putting that pressure on my opponent. Hold. 
Kreuz. A bit of confusion. It looks like the system had called the ball out, but it was an error. So it looks like they have to replay the point in the players. Ladies and gentlemen, there was an error called during the point, and the point will be replayed. So we had this in the, in the first match just a couple of times where it happens where the system actually calls the ball out, that makes the wrong call, and then the umpire steps in and overrules. When that happens, we're replaying the point. I like that point from Harajmar because it's a little bit in between being passive and too aggressive. It's that controlled aggression where you're still getting the depth and you're still being aggressive and, and taking the ball early, but you're not overplaying it. And you kind of get that forced error from your opponent. Almost didn't expect that return, Hadaj Maya. Great first serve Juice. and an even better return. that point as well for a bit of confidence there wants to really hold Advantage. her opening service game i don't never want to start off by losing your serve well especially but with her stature she yeah. is 185 centimeters hadaj maya likes to have i mean it, it would be nice for her to have a few more free points like that noticing about these two players early on well that was a really good game from Hadaj Maya to be able to get through and I have to say in the beginning the very first game I felt like she was hitting it a lot more flat than Cerebez Tormo and I think she made some really good adjustments in those last few points to be able to get just a little bit more margin on her ball and then attack at a much better position when she was in a much better position in the court to do that so I think she started to find her rhythm and her range in that last game Oh, yes. Excellent. That is terrific reflexes and hands. She knew exactly what she wanted to do after that return. Made sure she got that first volley in, got down low. And here, look at how she closes the net so well at end range. Excellent feel. Just angles that racket face a little bit. Terrific.
Just noticing where Hadja yeah, Jemaya is standing on the serve, <laughs> both, yeah. both first and second serve. She's right on the baseline, isn't she? But have a look at the that speed gun there on the second serve, only 127 yeah. k's an hour. It's not going to do it, especially against someone that takes the ball as early as Hadja Jemaya and has that pace, power, short backswing. And it's not just the pace, but it's also the depth and where you're hitting that yeah, second yeah, serve. And at the moment for Cerebus Toma, just not able to get Hadaj Maya uncomfortable off that return. Here's another one. She has plenty of time to get around to use the forehand. And here, again, the footwork. And that is the trajectory to margin of error Jill was talking about. Three break points now for Hadaj Maya. What a way to do it. First break in this first set. Hadaj Maya, 2-1, first set. And that's what she's capable of, isn't she, Hadaj Maya? Just that aggressive game style, attacking the serve. And if there's one weakness in, or a couple of weaknesses in the Sara Sarubas Tormo game, would you say it would be that serve element, Yelena? Yeah, it would be a little bit of that. So it's more so the second serve, I would say. So you can see that there's, it's it's a safe serve. She's not going to make a lot of double faults, but there is just not enough on it when it comes to the kick, the pace, the placement. It is quite a short serve. So against especially the bigger hitters, you, you, you will get in a bit of trouble with that. So for Cerebus Tormo today, it will be also very important that she keeps that first serve percentage up and look her first serve percentage is 40 percent got to get that up higher absolutely day one in perth well underway in sydney competition begins tomorrow stefano sitsipas one of the big stars for the second seeds team greece he'll be alongside maria sakari the world number six as he stands at the moment semi-finalist at last year's australian open loves playing down under keeping the fluids up because it is quite humid in sydney today he'll start his campaign as will of course team greece against team chile his first opponent will be nicholas jarry what a great year he had last year so a tricky first encounter as he begins season 2024. But in Perth at RAC Arena, Beatrice Haddad Meyer. She's up a break as Team Brazil look to fight back. So 2 1, only early doors in this second match for the United Cup after a victory to Alejandro Davidovic Fakina in the opening match. Beautiful shots here of RAC Arena. Team Brazil with the early break. And it's Beatrice Haddad Jamaya to see if she can continue taking the lead here in this first set. Please take a seat to the back of the court. Thank you. It's interesting watching the demeanor between yeah. these two players because after that last game, I do feel like Hadaj Maya just looked a little bit more confident in the first game. She was shaking her head even when she won the point. That sort of disappeared in that last game, definitely feeling a little bit better. But Srebez Tormo, she just has that intensity about her and she's, you know she's going to stay out there and fight till the end.
of unforced errors there from the Hadaj Maya forehand, which is her weapon, but it can also let her down no, a bit at times, can't it? It is, but that was a, a, a very good slice there from Surabas Thomas, especially down the line. He was almost going inside out. So you've got to be careful when you get around that ball and you're there outside in the tram lines in the doubles alley and then just how much risk are you going to take? And that's what she tried to do because it's hard to get back into the court then if you almost don't hit a winner. And that's a challenge for Hada Jumaya in this match. It's the risk versus the reward. And there's the reward. <laughs> Just finds that little bit more margin. 50, 30. And that's the tough thing when you know you got the match or you're controlling the points on your on your racket as we just quickly have a look at the serve abbreviated motion both arms go up at the same time leg drive good extension as well have a look at that landing also really smooth service action Yes, you like that. So that's where you're going to make that right so shot selection. She was behind the baseline to hit it that flat and go for a big shot. That was a rally ball. And I think uh, she just needs to get into a little bit of a mindset where, okay, I will play aggressive, but I'm also ready to build the point, construct it. And uh, just looking at these couple of games early on, maybe just going a little bit too much up and down the court. Maybe use the angles, open up the court a bit more. Maybe throw in coming forward or a drop shot. So a few forehand errors for Haddad Jamaya. Gives Saribas Tomo the break, and we're leveled here in the first set. Two all. And Jill, is that a bit of doubt now? Again, for Haddad Jamaya, looks a little bit, as soon as she maybe makes a couple of unforced errors, especially off the forehand, there's a little bit of doubt there? Yeah, I think a little bit. You can see it in her face just in the last few games. But, I mean, Saribas Tomo, the type of player she is, she can do that to you even before you walk on the court to play. You know these points are going to be long, and that can feel so draining at times. So you have to, what Elena, you said earlier, you have to be able to pick and choose when to step and when to be aggressive. You have to be patient at times. Oh, I like that from Hadad Maya Vasuvas Tomo. That's the speed and the agility around the court that she does possess. We've already seen it in this match, and that is her strength. That was phenomenal movement forward, but also just even to be able to control that shot, hold it till the last moment and guide it down the line. Crafty. where the errors start to creep in because it almost seems like Hadad Maya, she's trying to be aggressive. She thinks she's won the point, but the ball just keeps on coming back and back. And 
And it starts to plant a little bit of doubt in the mind of Hadajimaya. Comfortable hold for Sara Cerebes Tulmo. Takes a 3 2 lead here in this first set. As we take a look at Rottnest Island situated 19 kilometres off the coast of Fremantle and you get there by ferry and someone that would be very familiar with Rottnest would be you, Elena. Talk us through it. I mean, this is your home. You're, you're the familiar one. But yes, I've, I had a great time. And these uh, little guys as well, the quokkas, I was able to actually get a couple of photos and selfies. I did have to chase them around for about an hour, but I got there in the end. Uh, just amazing. The, the crystal clear waters. The food was incredible as well. Uh, only actually 19 kilometres uh, from Perth, which you wouldn't have known, I think, for a lot of people. It's very close and just a beautiful day out. Certainly a sight to see Rottnest Island. If you can get out there, highly recommend it. Coming up on night one of the United Cup, it's Cam Norrie. He won all three singles matches last year. How will he go this year? His first opponent, Australia's own Alex Dimonor, on the cusp of the world's top ten. He was at number 11 just a few weeks ago. And then it's Katie Boulder, his girlfriend, on court against Isla Tomjanovic as she continues her comeback from a knee injury. What a blockbuster showdown for you on night one of the United Cup from Perth. And it is a stunning city, stunning scene today, heading for a top of 33 degrees. The tennis action so far has been pretty impressive. Of course, it is Spain, Team Spain, as you can see in the bottom right of your screen. They were the first victors of this year's United Cup, courtesy of Alejandro Davidovich Fakina. At the moment, it's tight. We're back on serve in this first set between Cerebes Tormo and Haddad Meyer. So Beatrice Haddad Meyer looking to level things here in this opening set. Kilometers. That first serve from Hadaj Maya certainly is a weapon. Just when you think you've won the point, the ball just keeps on coming back and back, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And Sarah Stormer did a, a good job to stay in that rally, but that's the depth I was talking about. Just a little bit more. You can't throw too many balls into that mid-court area, especially against someone like Hadaj Maya, but still great hustle there. Still making Hadaj Maya get, have to hit that overhead. Good effort there. Didn't take her eye off the ball. See, that's the variation I like. That's what we talked about. And sometimes even if you're not successful with coming forward or a drop shot, it just it's an element of surprise and, and puts a bit of that doubt into your opponent's mind on what you're going to do next. And then they can't just hang back a couple of metres back behind the baseline. And on top of that, she actually did win the point. So good variety.
takes that forehand. And Ajmaya to level things here in this first set. Three all. Hard to know which way this first set will swing because it really is toe to toe. I like this though. She's backing herself. But look at that height over the net. That's the trajectory we were talking about. That ball was a lot flatter earlier on in this match in the first two games. Much better there. And you've got to continue backing yourself on what's potentially going to win you this match. And for Hadajmaya, that is to be aggressive, controlled aggression, play within yourself. But that's exactly what she has to do. I think also starting to see a little bit more positive emotion. I think from the first game, Serena Tormos did that well, constantly doing the fist pump to her team. And we're starting to see that a little bit more from Hadaj Maya when she hits and executes a very good shot. So it's good to see. Those back ends are very flat, Jill. You're, you're right, sitting right there on that baseline. That is almost hitting down at the ball, isn't it? Let's just quickly have a look at Sarah Cerebus Tormo's serve right there. Good leg drive, good extension. The right arm is lagging a little bit behind the left, but then she opens up. That right hip comes around, and that makes her collapse on that serve. That's where she loses pace and direction. defense into aggression right there. Team Spain's happy. And uh, Jill, I interrupted you. No. <laughs> but uh, those back ends uh, look a little bit flat. Uh, they're almost like she's hitting down on them, Hadaj Maya. You're right there on that baseline, aren't you? Yeah, she hits She hits that shot flat in general. So I agree with you, just a little bit more, more, more margin, but especially where she was, she was falling backwards on those couple backhands. And that's when you actually have to go for a little bit more shape. hold for Team Spain, Cerebus Tormo. 4-3, first set. It's that shift in momentum between mm. the two players. You can tell Cerebus Tormo has a bit more fire in her at the moment. Hadjad Jamaya seems like that body language just dropping a little bit. And this is actually very interesting because the match that I did watch at Roland Garros, uh, the really long battle that they had, it was a lot of that. There were so many momentum shifts and breaks of serves and both players having that, uh, those opportunities and, and even match points. And that just kind of seems to be... Uh, yeah, what happens in their matches uh, for whatever reason, and, and I think it's just the contrast. Y mantenerte pero a la vez sentir ese punto de relajación en la salida que has llevado una paralela de revés que te ha botado un metro de la un metro de la línea, o sea que la estabas llevando aquí y la la bola estaba botando y tú todavía seguías con ella en la raqueta, o sea espectacular. Entonces seguir buscando ese impacto tuyo porque ella lo va sintiendo y cada rato lo va lo va a sentir más. Ahora con la bola nueva. Intentamos mantener la posición abajo y a ver si en la que puedas un poquitín y estés apoyada, a ver si consigues que salte un poquito a la Pero si no es busca aceleración sin meter brusquedad aquí, sino baja y que le salte, porque se puede llevar un par para afuera en este juego, con la bola nueva, ¿vale? Convencida de ello. I wish I could understand what they were saying. Do you speak Spanish, Yelena? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I, yeah. But the, it's really... We could interpret what they were saying. Yeah, look, there's a lot of communication going on there, which I think is really good. And it seems very positive, and Sarah even getting involved and possibly saying, you yeah, know, this is what's kind of well, this is going what's working. for me. This is what, yeah. yeah, exactly. Sarah Cerebus Tormo is out. She's jumping around. 
She's got the momentum at the moment in this first set. Let's see if we can get Beatrice Haddad Maya back into this first set. That's where she wants to finish, inside the court. Yeah, but that was controlled aggression. So she had that margin for error. She played a little bit more within herself as it's well. And even that dry volley, get the height over the net. But she went five shots, you know, relatively big, but didn't, didn't go big, big and bigger and get into maybe an unforced error. Good shot there of that dry volley. Early preparation key and hitting it around shoulder height. Wow. That ball stayed so low off that slice, and that's where Sribas Tormo can cause some danger as well, is because when she gets pushed back or pushed wide on that backhand slice, she really understands that shot well, where it makes it difficult for Hadaj Maya to really get aggressive on that shot. You can see there just how low we got Hadaj Maya. We struggled to get under the ball because that is just how low it was. She was there with so much time, Saribes Dormo. Well, the anticipation was fantastic. The we movement to get up to that, she was ready to hit. Just tried to make it a little bit too good. Didn't need to be that good, did it? Because Hadaj Maya was all the way back on the baseline. But again, you've got to give credit to Hadaj Maya here. That's the variation. She's trying something else because Saribes Dormo, she is a couple of meters back behind the baseline there, returning, but also during the rally as well. So. Bringing her forward and throwing that in is a good tactic. Also a change of pace in that first serve. Another change of tactic for Haddad Maya. Almost worked to her advantage. Still has some work to do though. That's just too good from Beatrice Haddad Maya. Uses that forehand again, her weapon, and levels things here in this first set. Well, set up by the good serve here. I'd well, look at how far out Sarah Sirius Tomo was, and even 
for how well she moves, she couldn't get to this one. But have a look at where Hadajmaya was, about a metre behind the baseline. Still so much strength up there, that shoulder area to actually still hit a winner, get under and over the ball. Just wonder if she's trying to get around to hit that forehand a little too often because they didn't get around in time and, and she has struggled a little bit with the backhand Hadaj Maya with hitting it too flat and having some unforced errors. So is she going to have to adjust that and make a bit of a change there and still try and hit it over that to actually use the backhand and not get stuck with the feet? Let's just she just has to be careful that she's not wanting to rally all day. That's what Saruba's Tomo wants to do. She wants to be in those rallies for as long as she can. It's only her first double fault of the match. Still, though, every point is important here at this stage of a set. She does so well, isn't it? She just fights yeah. for every single shot. But does not give up. Yeah, but she reads it well. And she knew she was a couple of metres back behind the baseline. Knew that off that overhead. It was going to probably come with pace straight at her. Right here. Have a look. She leaves and anticipates. She was already moving to her right. It's great anticipation. And even this one, she already started running. And as a player, that puts pressure on you. Hadad Maya missed that drop shot because she felt like I need to do more and yeah. more and better and better. Full credit to Cerebus Tomo. Team Spain keeps on with the fighting spirit. 5 4, first set. You can tell what type of player Sara Soribos Tormo is. She is a fighter. Loves to be out on court. The longer, the better for her. And now it'll be interesting to see how much of the conditions on court, the heat, there's a fair bit of wind and just I guess the match fitness coming off both players a few weeks off the tour first match back physically where are they at there's a lot to play out still you can see a lot of communication and feedback right there I love how she listens 
Eso te digo, o sea, que de repente te, también te un poco. Si, si, si la jugada te deja ir, eh, o sea, sin positive. prisa, tú vas en tu jugada y pues, si de repente ves que tienes, coges un poquito de posición en tu cabeza, voy a buscar la opción o bien porque te bajo y te, y te aprieto o bien porque tiro y te, y te hago saltar y que dudes. We have cameras everywhere at the United Cup. John Millman in the foreground. Taylor Fritz also spinning the legs over. Millman, he will retire. What a veteran performer he's been for Team Australia. He'll retire after the Aussie Open, the highlight beating Federer at the US Open in 2018. Of course, while for Taylor Fritz, the defending champion, Team USA, they're the third seeds. He'll begin his campaign against Cam Same. Norrie and Team Great Britain on Sunday. We're getting to the final stages of this first set as Team Brazil look to try and hang in this contest. Beatrice Haddad Mai to serve. We are on serve in this first set at the moment. It's a pretty gripping encounter. Both come out of the blocks well, striking the ball cleanly to get their new seasons underway. Pressure here now for Beatriz Haddad Maya from Team Brazil. Let's see if she can level things here in this first set. Has some work to do. Jill, from your end, are you noticing anything different from either players in terms of tactics that they've changed or the conditions a factor right now? The conditions haven't changed that much. I mean, I think they both physically still look good, but they're, you're right, their demeanours are very different, even between their teams as well. I mean, Spain seems a little bit more energetic and getting a little bit more energy to Cerebus Tormo. different feel over from Team Brazil. I mean, they just look more, much more calm and relaxed, but, you know, when Rafael, the coach and if, of Dodge Maya, is speaking to her, Dodge Maya is just kind of looking down where you saw Alex Ribas Tormo making eye contact with her coaches with such intensity, and so a very different feel from both of them. Well, that was good patience there from Hadaj Maya at a very important time in the match, really needed that point. So she actually didn't overplay, made a little bit more within herself. As we have a look at the unforced errors, mm. 22 off the racket of Hadaj Maya and only eight off the racket of Saruba's Tormo really tells what type of game style they each play. Let's for sure. Excellent feel. Good variation. Changed the grip in the last moment. 40, 15. From that semi-western to go to continental to get under the ball and to hit that drop shot. Not easy to do. Have a look at this. And, well, this guy just looked like she was going to hit a forehand. It's not easy. She was on no. the baseline too. So it had, had to really back spin. Yeah. Be executed beautifully. hold there for Hagar Jamaya. Much better depth in that and those rallies from Hataj Maya as well throughout those points. And I do like the use of the drop shot quite a bit because we see where Cerebus Tormo mm. likes to hang out by 
the Perth sign at the back of the court. That's yep. where she likes to be. It's pretty deep in the court, so I like that variety from Hataj Maya. Especially if he gets a phys into a physical match, if you continuously have to run down those drop shots, but also kind of not knowing that when they're coming either keeps you guessing, but also physically takes a lot out of the legs if this match uh, goes into a long one. We're, we're already at 51 minutes and it's five all. I haven't seen too many double faults yet, but that's now two in the last... Well, the pressure's building. Yeah, two service game, but, but the issue with that second serve is that, you know, when you get under pressure, is it going to hold up? Well, she knows that Hadad Maya will continue to attack the return, even though she doesn't make it. Well, usually, you know, your serve... And your shots are going to hold up if you're technique, if you've got the technique. And with Cerebus Tomo, she collapses a little bit, especially with her left arm as well on the serve. She turns her right hip, so she really comes down on the ball. That's why her double folds go into the net, and it's a, kind of a slice serve. And even there, you can see she just comes down a little too quickly, has to stay up a little longer with the ball and extend up. And another opportunity for Hadad Maya to have a look on this second serve. Rupert's Tomo wants to challenge, but there are no challenges. Well, she can get a review here. She was sure that ball was out. Very close. So another request. <laughs> I think the players are still getting used to this format. I think this just got the line. I wish you kind of thought too early that this was going to be wide. Yeah. So five all, 30 all. Interesting to see how the players handle the pressure now. That's under pressure that's as well. Easy. That's uh, one of those choices you make, you know, risk versus reward. Do you go for it? And, and how much do you go for? Paid off there. It's a big forehand. So break point now for Hadar Jamaya. the break. She needs 6-5. set. And she's really utilising that forehand drop shot, isn't she? Beatrice Hadaj Maya. Not only can she get a lot of pop and pace off her shots, but also has that little bit of finesse, that variety. So you can see how far back Zerubo's Torbo was in that last point. 
Well, she had the time there as well. That was a mid-court ball. And uh, not much pace as well. And that's the depth we talked about. So, Rish Tomo does so well at, at defending and keeping the ball in play. But you also have to be just aware of your depth as well. And the Hadaj Maya made a really good choice of shot there. Had a lot of options as well. That's not easy. And chose, chose that drop shot on a break point. Beatrice Haddad Meyer looking very calm and confident. She leads 6-5 in this opening set. Up against Team Spain. There's been lots of momentum shifts, but she's kept her cool. And she's handled the pressure well. And she's stuck to her game. And now it's whether she can consolidate that Sorry. break and earn herself this first set. Just under an hour of play here in this women's singles match. 57 minutes played exactly. And it's team Brazil. Beatrice Haddad Maia looking to close this first set. I had a lot of options there, hard, <laughs> hard to pick. You know, could go down the line, you could go across, maybe on something like that. Maybe going a little bit more through the service line instead of just trying to hit up and down the court. So use the angle a little bit more. Give yourself a little bit more of that safety, a bit more topspin. You know what, she makes that look easy, but it's not. To get around the ball continuously like that, but have great footwork, be strong on the legs, and look at the steps that she makes to adjust. There's a lot of work going into mm. the point, isn't there, to yeah. get to this have point. Have a look at this. Yep. Yeah, early she knew exactly what she wanted to do. And I love that angle as well, so not so much depth. But a bit more height to actually get the angle. Beautiful. Twice now in this game where she's had the opportunity to win the point. And she's almost hesitated or she's second-guessed herself. But you can see there almost a little bit of nerves and panic. She really rushed that. She smothered the ball instead of hitting through the ball all the way towards the target. That's what you want to do even under pressure or even when the nerves are there. Just continue hitting all the way through the ball. Oh, too good. Team Spain's happy. Everyone's off their feet. It was actually a really good play from Hadaj Maya there. 50, 40. But Cerebe Stomo again, just a strength to actually get out into the corner and then have a look at the shot that she produces. And she was also already ready to get back into the court just at the, the angle. Yeah. And just seeing where Beatrice Hadaj Maya was situated in the court, to have that awareness.
that's think she shot. heard you. Yeah, that's a shot I, I, would, I would really like Hadajmar to maybe use a little bit more off both sides. Because when you've got someone standing back a few metres back behind the baseline consistently, you can't kind of get through them unless everything is deep and powerful all the time. But that puts pressure on you. Look at this little angle. Early preparation, just it gets under and over the ball. A little bit more racket, head around the ball. Perfect. So he saves one break point, but still another one to save. And she'll be disappointed with that game. This certainly was on her racket for Hadaj Maya. Jill, I just want to ask you quickly, because for me, I've been especially uh, paying attention to Hadaj Maya's serve, and that might be key in this tiebreaker. She's actually, for a lefty who has a good serve, not using her lefty out wide on the ad side, especially other than sometimes on the second serve, but just not using the angles, really, to get Surubas Tomo off with that serve. It's more just going up and down the court and just straight into the hitting zone. Yeah, I thought you made a great point with the ground stroke in particular, yes. using the angles off the ground because of where Sariba's Tomos is, is standing. And I agree with you. I don't think she's used that lefty serve at all. I think because she can power through her opponents with those serves and get some free points. But so I feel like she relies on the power a little bit too much. She can throw in that variety and put a little bit more slice occasionally on the angle serves. So this is what it comes down to. Six all, tie break, first set. Oh. What a way to open that tie break. From both players. It's a great point from both sides. Suribes Tomo again having to cover a lot of court did well. This one uh, had options. Maybe going using the lob because Hadajma does close the net, especially after the first volley. So that's where you maybe just hold the shot a little bit longer and just uh, throw that one up. But nevertheless, Hadajma having great reflexes. That's the serve. We haven't seen her use that very much. Jill is laughing. Good call. You laughing. Good call. I know she heard you. <laughs> <laughs> she heard me about the uh, drop shots. Uh, Worked about, out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, the angled ground strokes and now the serve. <laughs> Might need you to get you in the team zones, Elena. Oh, I'm okay up here, Brianna. <laughs> it's a tough job. <laughs> Huge, perfect start to this tie break for Hadad Maya. Now, I know they've had massive matches in the past, especially that last one at Roland Garros, almost four hours, and, and neither player is going to give up. They're massive fighters and great competitors. But for me, uh, this first set could be key, could set the tone for what happens in the rest of the match and maybe even, you know, in the second set and whether the match is finished in straight. Oh, wow. See, again, she closes the net so well. Great hands. We've talked about being an excellent doubles player. And that's just crisp right there. But I think for Saribas Tomo, just has to hold hold it a bit longer. Now, just be aware. Look at where Hadaj Maya is. Just use your peripheral vision there to see where your opponent is and maybe throw up that lob.
So five consecutive points for five Beatrice Haddad Mayan. Goes to show what she is capable of when she can. When point after point, that consistency. But to me, I felt like the first point of the tie break was huge because she got that huge roar from Hadaj Maya as well. After she came into the net, played a very aggressive point. I think from that point on, she you could feel that she had that momentum. It was such a great first point to start the tie break. Great, great hustle there from Haraj Maya. Couldn't quite get there, but Sariba's time. I like that change up right here with the forehand. She saw the opportunity to take it early, comes forward. Look how low she stays down on that volley and continues to move forward as well. It's actually a really good running technique there from Haraj Maya. She was ready running with her racket forward. So when you do that, that's what you want to do. So you're ready when you actually get to the ball. And then you can either angle it, you can go down the line, but you've got to be ready to hit that ball in case you get there. And no, day, no doubt Beatrice Haddad Jemaya knows that. Sarubas Tomo will fight to the very last point of this first set. So she has to keep the pressure on. Big forehand there from Haddad Maya to earn herself five set points. Do you have any request for review of the call on the right hand side? So, sorry, Buzz Tormo just wants to check where that ball landed. Set points now for Haddad Maya. And I only need one to win the first set. In an hour and nine minutes, Seven Team Brazil are up 7 6 in this women's singles match. Well, she played a flawless tie break Beatrice Haddad Maya really did not do anything wrong as we have a look at the first set stats Yelena what really stood out for you well you always look at the kind of the surf percentages and for Sartre service Tom that did go up it was at around 40 percent 61 percent a bit more for Haddad Maya 68 percent look at the net points one as well for Haddad Maya nine out of 13 yes there's a big difference in unforced errors but also uh, look at the winners from Haddad Jumai, especially on the forehand she's got 14 there and uh, the big thing though is it's the key points the big points which you don't have here in the stats and and for Haddad Jumai, when she really needed to play her best she did and uh, she wasn't serving first she was under some scoreline pressure but she played a perfect tie break up as we have a look at some of the highlights right here and we saw some incredible tennis two players with very different game styles and we saw the variation Hadaj Maya really trying to be aggressive here and right on top of the baseline trying to control the rallies but it really did come down to that tie break up and Hadaj Maya just... Coming up tonight, 
Cam Norrie taking on Alex Dimonor. It's Team Great Britain and Team Australia. Two top 20 players. Norrie at 18, Dimonor at 12. It's Dimonor 2-1 in the head-to-head. -head. He also claimed the most recent win at the Toronto Masters in straight sets, but it was Norrie 12 months ago at this tournament that got the job done. So looking forward to that on a spectacular day in the capital of Western Australia. This is Perth. What a beautiful scene it is. The Swan River winding its way around the CBD. So much redevelopment of the cultural centres of Perth in recent years. They've got a fantastic new stadium there as well. And that's the emotion there from Beatrice Haddad Meyer. She's keeping Team Brazil in this tie against Team Spain. She's taken the first set 7-6. She was dominant in that tiebreaker. Really put the pressure on Cerebes Tormo, who had no answer for the pace, the skill, and the sheer determination of Haddad Meyer. What a season she had last year. So now it's the questions being asked of Cerebes Tormo. Recent history suggests, though, this one is far from over. Second set, Team Brazil to serve. That's a perfect point, just wearing Hadaj Maya down, but also Love just the working the ball all around the court. Those are these matches when you have a massive first set and, and when it comes down to the tiebreaker, they can go kind of, you know, one of two ways, and that's that we can have a, a completely different second set and it can finish the match off quickly or we can very quickly get to a third set. And sometimes a person that's won the first set tiebreaker, they can lose their concentration. It was a bit of a relief that they've won the first set. That's where this first game is so crucial for Hadaj Maya, yeah. just to keep that momentum from that unbelievable tie break that she played. And sometimes the, the the player that's also maybe lost the first set, it can be really disheartening, like I said, like more a psychological battle. And it might be hard then to start off the second set well. And uh, that's why I always say, you know, being a fighter, being a competitor, it pays off because I always say the locker room is watching. That means everyone's always following matches and whether, you know, you're able to come back from being a set down and, uh, you know, Sometimes we say for those players, you know, they just don't go away. <laughs> it's so important. Oh, well done, ladies. 
that point had it all. It had the angle, it had the drop shots, it had the depth that really brought both players forward. They used every single part of the court. We saw the different shots, different repertoire as well. Great feel here from Cerebus Tomo and guest right here as well. What was the but movement from Cerebus Tomo also? Just that little shuffle to the right to make Dad Meyer think where to hit that ball. So I'll just quickly go to, I think, the Who's reputation that you have on tour as a player, as a fighter, someone that doesn't go away, and it's the worst kind of player to play. Not already before you actually go out there on the court because you know what you're in for, but when you are out there mm. and it's in your mind knowing that the opponent just doesn't go away, doesn't give up. Having that kind of aura and reputation is really important. Two break points now for Cerebus Tormo and a look on a second serve. Game. And it's a double fault. That gives Team Spain the early break. Cerebos Tormo leads 1-0 in this second set. Jill, that was uh, for Haraj Maia, a little bit of a maybe letdown after playing such a great tiebreaker, but it is all about the concentration and the momentum shifts, isn't it? Yeah, um, I think he, I think it's tough when you have such a tight first set. Sometimes that really carries your momentum forward and you keep going and, and playing better and better. But you put so much energy, as you said, into a first set as well. And you almost sometimes had this sigh of relief that you got through it. And sometimes that can cause a letdown. It really depends where your mindset is, what type, you know, the player, where how they're feeling in that moment. And you mentioned it really well, how much effort it takes to win a point against Cerebus Tormo. And knowing that you have to continue to do that for another whole set. I mean, that was a long first set. And so in your mind, you know how much energy it's going to take. And you can't have one little let, let down because Cerebus Tormo is going to stay in every single point. Well, Jill, we, we've been there. All three of us have been there. But you don't know whether it's better to continue having kind of those nerves and that nervous energy or to relax a little bit if you want yeah, that I know, first set. Right. It's, it's tough. It's a, it's a very fine line balance. But, I mean, this is where Hadan Mai, even with that, you know, maybe not her best game right there, she gets broken right away. This is where you got to sort of dig in, get that focus back. That's a great point. I think what I like from Suruba's trauma already on. early on in this second set is she's trying to get the ball into Hadajma's back end so that Hadajma doesn't control the rally as much with the forehand. And then she's opening the court up and the different angles and able to go down the line and come forward as well. So a little bit of a different pattern of play that we're seeing here. See right there? So she's going actually more Let's into Hadajma's yeah. back end, which we have seen quite a few unforced errors of. She hits it so flat and at the moment just not able to find that trajectory. So for me, Cerebus Toma, I can see a bit of a tactical difference already in this second set and it's working. There's another backhand error. But even if we take away the scoreline and we just look at the two plays, you would never be able to tell that Sarah Cerebus Tormo has just lost a really tough first set. She's almost just reset and she's just the same player. There's no fluctuation in her emotions in how she's playing.
player that she, there she goes again see how she opens up by going to the backhand she opens up the line and now she's using her lines actually to get Hadaj Maya on the run and at full stretch and just to open up the court a bit more she's getting a lot of good energy from her team as well after those last few points all of them up on their feet she also creates it herself too Jill yeah, in terms exactly. of her energy and her positivity yeah she's just overall has a, a great de demeanor I mean Great she, mentality. She shows that, that she's mm. going to fight. You can see it in her yeah. when she walks around. Yeah. So a bit of work to do here for Beatrice Haddad Maya. Love two here in the second set. She was there. Just couldn't quite execute off that backhand side, Saruba's Tormo. She knows it too. That was a great hustle, the movement now. right there. Have a look. She was already running forward. The racket was there. Just overplays it a little bit. Needed to just get a little bit more around the ball, just a little bit more angle it, less kind of power there, more feel. Wow. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> Having to do a lot of work there physically, Hadaj Ma, to actually get around and hit those forehands. But phenomenal footwork and strength. Not once, but twice off that forehand yeah. side. Have a look at where she is. But also to create that angle is not easy. Good effort. Early preparation with the racket really helps. can create the angle and off the both angle. sides. Yeah. Sorry, best Tormo. But look at this. She was actually on the run right here. And look at how she wraps her left hand, actually, and the racket around the ball all the way to create that angle. Not easy to do. That was a really smart shot selection from Hadaj Maya, just 15. using her eyesight to notice. That was one of the few times that Cerebus Tormo was actually inside the baseline, and Hadaj Maya recognized that, got good height and depth on that last sh shot just to jam Cerebus Tormo. So a couple of opportunities now for Hadaj Maya to get herself on the board here in this second set.
really knifes it, Do that slice. Sorry, Russ Thomas, such a good shot and stays low as well. And I really like that last one because it was also a little bit shorter in the court. It was through the middle. So Hadaj Mahad didn't have a lot of angle to work with and really just overplayed that forehand, wanted a quick point. And that's sometimes the challenge. When do you pull the trigger? Well, it's not only physical, it's mental too here because Petrus Hadaj Maya had a couple of opportunities to get herself on the board thinking that she may have had the game in her pocket. Not quite to be. Let's now has to work for it again. Restart. bit of pressure applied again to Hadaj Maya. And this is what we're talking about, that psychological thing. If you get down in the second set quickly, you start, you start to want quick points. This is now really going for the lines, going for too much. So almost that psychological edge that's now on Surabas Tomo's side here. So a break point opportunity for Surabas Tomo to continue her lead here in the second set. That is a yes. big save from Hadaj Maya because that potentially could have been two breaks of serve down. She played a patient point. Got a little bit more of an angle there through the service line. I really like that play. So saves a break point. Back to Juice here. We don't see that a lot from the racket of Cerebus Tormo, those free points. Possibly allowing her dodge mind to get back into this second set. Tough game for Hadaj Maya, but she holds her nerve. She's on the board. 2-1, Team Spain. Team Spain, two, give us one. Beautiful shots here of Perth City views over the Swan River. Elizabeth Key with lots of bars and restaurants and so much to do. Murray Street Mall for shopping. Kings Park. Beautiful city, Perth. We've got Optus Stadium. And the beautiful sights of the Swan River at night. It's the place to be, Yelena. Sure is. Well, your hometown, isn't it? But uh, yeah, we've got some of those beautiful views from our hotel as well of the Swan River. Just uh, amazing. So, really tough match for both players here. Team Spain up against Team Brazil. It is Beatrice Haddad Maia who took the opening set seven games to six in just over an hour. And it's been a topsy-turvy second set as well. 
Sahara Saruba's trauma Time. with the early break. Still with some work to do. So much intensity amongst Team Spain. And Team Brazil, on the other hand, look a little bit more relaxed. It's interesting because Haraj Ma is actually really taking her time she on is. these uh, changeovers, but also between points as well we've seen that especially in this second set and she has been able to compose herself a little bit from a bit of a slow start in the second set by doing that so she's doing that with a lot of purpose so sarah sariba is tormo looking to continue the lead here in this second set And psychologically, well, I say that it's important to know those ebbs and flows of a match and when to kind of slow down a little bit, when you need a little bit of that extra time or when it's time to maybe rush out of your chair. And why I say that, that's what the best players in the world do. 15. And I'll go to <laughs> really and uh, the best player. Uh, Novak Djokovic has talked about that recently and saying even that he looks at the screen right up on, you know, to see how the other players how are. How the other going. players are yep. and, and their face expression and to see if they're maybe looking tired or tense. That's how far you go, those one percenters and just how important the psychological side is in tennis. Phenomenal touch there from Hadaj Maya. I mean, she really let that ball drop. And sometimes when you do that, the shot can be a little bit more challenging to control, but she's got such good hands at the net. It's a lot of underspin on that drop volley and needed it with how much height she had on. That's just incredible touch. I like how she's able to actually still angle that racket, racket face to get that drop volley. Takes skill and soft hands. So she misses that, that one, but still, she was almost you know, two breaks down, potentially Tomo serving for four love. But by slowing down, Hadajma has given herself that kind of five to ten minute window to get out of that little bit of a slump that she had early on in the second set. So that's just great awareness of what she needed to do. So 
Sarah Sorubes Tormo with the opportunity to continue her lead in this second set. Just not quite capitalising on that shorter ball, did she? Back to Juice. See what she's trying to do, and she's trying to get out of just those cross court patterns and not allowing Hadaj Maya to continuously be able to get around the forehand. So she's going into the back end and then trying to change it up down the line. You just got to be careful though that you don't overplay because that was a rally ball. So you just still got to make sure you keep your margins. Massive point here. Inside the court on that last back end. Hadaj Maya fights her way back into the second set. Love two, and now she's level at two all. Well, a point away from bringing a double break down. And uh, she fights back, and we're leveled here at two games all. And Jill, what do you think? How important was that game right there, that break of serve? Yeah, that was huge. And I, I mean, I just watching the court position of Cerebus Turmo, I do feel like she's trying in the second set maybe to get up on the baseline a little bit more. And I think those last couple of points, she drifted back once again, and it just gave that opening for Hadaj Maya to get that break back. So this is Love the same 15. end where Hadad Maya served to open this second set. So let's see if she can maybe just slightly adjust whether it's the serve position or her positioning on the court. I'd love to know your thoughts, Yelena, on the serve of Hadaj Mai because she certainly has the potential to win a lot more free points. However, I feel today hasn't quite capitalised on that serve. a wonderful point just really calm and composed she was so patient Hadaj Maya and I love the drop shot because she didn't panic good disguise here she played it all the way moves forward and even here she holds she almost waits for Cerebus Tomo to commit to the down the line 
and then doesn't panic on the pass. I'll go to your question with the serve. Well, first of all, the, the first serve percentage for Hadamari is 44% in this it's set. Low. It's quite low, 60% for the match. But also I think it's – the reason for that is indecisiveness. And I don't think that she's used that lefty slide serve enough to both the juice side and the ad side. She certainly set herself up with that last serve. Just not quite able to execute on the forehand. Because, I mean, you know, for us right-handers uh, facing a left hand, especially it's not nice. Serve, it's, a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Just that complete different slice to the other side. I can see Jill's laughing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I had nightmares about some left-handers. <laughs> especially when you know that someone's got a... Like Hadajma, who has a big forehand and can execute so well. She tried it there. as well, a very positive reaction. 14, and ju not just with the serve, but also from the back of the court, like she's using some of the angles here. And that's what you want to do against players, especially that are further back, that can absorb power and absorb a lot of what's coming from the other side of the court. Use the angles, use that serve as well out wide, especially as a lefty. It's an opportunity for Haddad Jamal to take a lead now for the first time in this second set. And does so with a big forehand inside out. Haddad Maya with the lead now, 3 2, second set. Team Brazil lead three, games two, second set. What a way to turn around this set. Trailing love two and then winning three straight games. Hasn't been easy for Haddad Maya, but as we've touched on, and you've touched on, Yelena, it's taking a little bit of extra time between points. Maybe just giving her some time to think, to process, reassess. Well, those first kind of almost three games, she did really well not to lose her serve for the second time in a row. What she did really well was was just to slow it down. It was really quick two and a half games where she just had a flurry of errors, low first serve percentage. So it's not easy to turn around. And to her credit, had Ajma up Absolutely. against someone like Saribas Tormo to be able to not give the second set away, but to fight back and take the lead has been impressive. So deep into day one in Perth, in Sydney, we've got players warming up, getting ready for their matches starting from tomorrow onwards. Felix Auger, Alia Sim in the gym. Team Canada taking on Team Chile on Sunday. His opponent, Nicholas Jarry. Felix, good memories of Ken Rosewell Arena, having won the ATP Cup here with Canada a couple of years ago. They are the seventh seeds. The women's singles player, Layla Fernandez. So a very strong combination, and he's looking strong as he goes through the motions there. Looking beautiful is Perth. What a stunning city it is, the capital of Western Australia. Just over two million people, and it has never looked better. And the players on offer have never been better either. If you don't mind, the world number one, Novak Djokovic, he's landed in Perth, he's ready to go, and Iga Svantec yesterday catching a few waves, surfing, just one of the cool things you can do if you make a trip down under to Perth. It's a beautiful part of this country. So Team Spain, they were ahead after a victory to Alejandro Davidovich Fakina. And now a little bit of pressure for Sara Saribes Tormo. She was up to love. She now trails to three, but she's serving to square it back up in this second set.
Love That's another shot I feel like Hadad Maya can add a little bit more often is that high heavy forehand deep into the corner. It's so difficult for a righty if it goes high up to the two-handed backhand side to consistently get aggressive on that shot. That was a really nice deep shot from Hadad Maya. Let's push it. I'm not sure if you've noticed, Jill, you'd be able to see it better down on court side, but just the positioning of where Hadad Maya hits her forehand, she does has that ability to hit so many winners off an inside out forehand, but now it's slightly changed up where she's hitting her forehand, choosing to go a bit more to the backhand of Cerebo Tormo. Yeah, you're right. She's capable of really hitting the ball in any direction. And I think that's why Cerebo Tormo has gotten caught a couple times where she's gotten frozen at the baseline, just hasn't been able to read the shot off of Hadaj Maya, but she is, when she goes down the line over the higher part of the net, getting a little bit more margin. The inside out is still flatter, but she feels confident on that shot. See, for me, this is the play for Sarubas Tomo. Skip going to that back end for a couple of shots because at times Dajma has missed that early on in the rally and then if not just you change it up down the line and just kind of move the ball around as much as you can and not allow Hadajma to dictate fully with that forehand especially to get around it and when the ball's in the middle of the court as well. A few more double faults in the second set from Cerebro Tomo. Just allowing Hadad Maia to stay in this game. There's not much there that Hadad Maya did wrong. It really was on the racket of Cerebro's Tormo. Just has so much variety. You can tell, well, you can see why clay is her favourite surface. But she extended the rally enough as well to wear Hadad Maya down in that rally. And then the drop shot was just beautifully disguised. Have a look at where she is as well, behind the baseline. But the last minute change of a grip as well. Great view over there. Enough backspin just to make it stay low and not pop up. Let's listen. Great hitting from both, and Jill, you can see a little bit better from down there, turning into a bit of a physical match. We're just shy of two hours here. A little bit, yeah. I think they both actually look still pretty good to me. I, I think Hadaj Maya was stood out to me there, just a little bit more patience on so many of these bigger points where she's been able to just stay in the rallies a little bit longer. Not sending a message to Cerebas Tormo that Hadaj Maya is going to stay in those longer rallies. But both still looking 
feel it pretty physically good, in my opinion. Double fault. If the sun's playing a part on that particular end where Cerebro's Tomo is serving. But remember the conversation we had in the in the first set when that serve or certain shot's gonna let you down? It's due to that technique and, and that usually collapses under pressure, doesn't it? And that serve maybe getting a bit tight, letting that left arm down too quickly caused that double fault at a crucial time. Anticipation for Haddad Maya. Four games in a row now for Team Brazil. Team Brazil four games, two seconds. Well, she saw that one coming. I mean, she got a head start. I was watching her side of the court as soon as Cerebus Tormo changed that racket head for the drop shot. Haddad Maya was already on the move, anticipating that drop shot so well. It's also a good sign for Haddad Maya because when Saruba's Tomo find he's using that drop shot, it's almost a sign to say she's given up in the rally and she's got nothing else to go to other than that drop shot. But also the court position helps, doesn't it? Because Haddad Maya is not giving up that baseline and court position. So it makes it easier to hustle down some of those drop shots and get to them. And that's where, for me, I really give a lot of credit to Haddad Maia today yeah. because potentially, look, she made some unforced errors early on in the match, could have backed off and maybe gone a bit tentative, but she hasn't. She's backed herself and been on top of the baseline, known what she wants to do and be aggressive. And she has, you know, stuck with that. And She's worked through the match, hasn't she? Yeah. Hasn't been a, yeah. you know, at times hasn't been a best tennis, but it's, it's about how you figure out how to win those points and, and get to the end. See, like that. You've got to, as a player, be able to back yourself, believe it, even if it sometimes doesn't go your yes. way. And that's what she has. A uh, big reason why she's also uh, reached the top 10 yeah. in the world this year, 11 right now. But that's the reason at times, you know, she's got that confidence, backs herself regardless of maybe some errors. That's cracking forehand. Doesn't get much cleaner than that. Interesting to see how Haddad Maia responds now. She's up 4-2, 30-15, and up a set. It's always that willingness to work a little bit harder to win the match. Love the body language and the positivity Thank from Cerebro's Tormo. It doesn't matter what the score is. She could be down six love, five love, and you wouldn't even know.
the disappointing miss there from Saruba's Tormo. But that's been kind of a little bit the pattern throughout this match is those key points, the 30 all points and even the break points and the game points in, in the important moments to hold your serve. Hadajma has just been able to, like you said, Brian, dig deep. She's really refused to miss and, and, and play a cheap point. And how replicate me, that in practice? You know, on court, you know, in these pressure situations is where it counts. Mm. That's where you get the confidence from. And that's just a little bit of that uh, back end that we were talking about. Just a little too flat with the open racket face instead of just using a little bit more of the wrist, especially for her, the right hand getting under and then over the ball. Just a little bit. How hard does she have to work to win a point, though? Yeah. That's why I said today mentally yeah. she has been so strong to win those big points because they haven't been easy. See again, no cheap point on the big one. Yes, she's had some unforced errors, but on the big uh, points, she has just played so solid, such great tennis, refusing to miss. And he said, yes, it comes with matches, but it's also putting a little bit of focus on it in practice, knowing, okay, what are you going to do when that big point comes? Where are you going to serve? What are you going to do on your return and your return position? You know, do you play a little bit more through the middle? It's having those patterns to go through, but also the way that you focus on the important points and knowing when they are. Gutsy hold there Thank for Haddad Maya. Well in the lead she now. She's a set in 5-2. Five, so five games in a row now for Beatrice Haddad Maya. Really seems to have worked her way into this second set. Team Brazil in control here in this women's singles match. Beatrice Haddad Maia won the opening set 7-6. Tough battle. She trailed love to in the second set and has now won five straight games to give herself a 5 2 lead. It hasn't been easy. Her opponent, Team Spain, Sahara Saribas Tormo, has made her work for it.
So what do you say? Hadaj Maya would have to continue doing in terms of, you know, having that controlled aggression and using a bit more variety, like those angles and slice serves. Yeah, look, it's still only that one break. I'd put pressure here on the serve, obviously, especially if she gets some second serve. She's got, she's got that freedom now with the score line as well. So Sarah Sarubas Tormo from Team Spain looking to keep herself in this match. She trails 2-5 in this second set. And that's a little bit of everything. Score pressure, you know, the score line and having hit a couple of double folds. And not an ideal start for this service game for Saribas Tormo, two double faults. Well, Hadaj Maya is really standing right on top of the baseline, especially in its second serve, really waiting to crack that return. But when you a little bit just collapse with that left arm and come around with your right shoulder, you can't get much kick on your serve, so you don't have the safety. Determination on her face, doesn't she? Sarubas Tormo. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. It's such a good play that slice, especially down the line and a little bit shorter inside the court to bring your opponent forward and. That's one of those ones that I think I did my heart to get around that, especially not just because you have to get around the ball, but you've got to come forward. So developing maybe a slice there that she can go to, even get down inside the court, cut off the angle and hit a back end. But getting under that and, and being able to slice would help. 30, 40. So after two hours and five minutes, Beatrice Haddad Jamaya finds herself with a match point to keep Team Brazil in this tight. out the women's single, 7-6-6-2. It was a hard-fought effort for Team Brazil, but she'd be happy to get the win. Yeah, she will, and we thought maybe that first set, whoever maybe is able to get that one on the board might set the tone for the match, and it really did make things so much easier for Hadaj Maia, and she actually really built in confidence from there, and she is a, a confidence player that really uh, freed her up, and still, though, from Sara Saribas, Tomo, uh, look, a great match, fought hard. I uh, felt like she still played some really good tennis. It's a great match from, from both to start off the year. It's not easy when you're coming off the off season as well. Not it can all. be and a little bit rusty. And yeah. They're both very familiar with one another. So we knew we'd expect a tough, hard fought match. And it certainly could have gone anyone's way, but it was Beatrice Haddad Maya who was able to consistently back herself 
today with the win, 7662 in a little over two hours. And she keeps Team Brazil's hopes alive as we will be going into a live mixed doubles. We love that, don't we? A lot of mixed doubles, <laughs> especially with some of the players that maybe don't play as much mixed doubles. We've seen them all practicing here all week, practicing that mixed doubles because a lot of these ties could come down to that. And that's what we've got here in Perth. First tie, we've got a live mixed doubles. And that won't be too far away. Players will just cool off and... It's getting confirmation that Beatrice Hadaj might will be playing in the mixed. Let's hear what Beatrice Hadajmai has to say alongside with Jill Krabus courtside. Yes. Beatrice, congratulations. You know her very well. You've played her many times. You knew it was going to be a very, very tough match. Talk about your mentality going into this match. You were so strong today. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who came to support us today, especially Brazilians. And I think it was a big challenge for all of us. It's the first match of the season, end of the year. And I know she's a very fight girl. We know each other since we are juniors, so I'm very happy that I was fighting, trying to be humble and accepting my mistakes. <laughs> so I'm happy with this win, and now I'm preparing my mind to go in 20 minutes now in doubles. <laughs> you have a little bit of time, so you can enjoy this moment for a little bit, but you, you kept your team alive. Does that cross your mind? Does that enter your mind when you're starting to this match today? Yeah, we you know it's like a Billie Jean King Cup, so yeah, it's a special moment. I think everyone here must be ready for three matches, so yeah, I was prepared for that, and now I'm going to try to prepare myself and do my 100% on the court, and let's see what's going to happen. You talked about the crowd. There's a lot of Brazilian flags in here. I know how much playing for your country means to you. You got Woman of the Year last year at the end of the year in a magazine back in Brazil. Talk about just that emotion and what that meant to you. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, thank you. I was surprised with this win. <laughs> but yeah, it feels special. Brazil is huge, so we have a lot of people. And I know it's a pleasure for me because I know how hard it is to well, to have the opportunities our, in our country as well. So I try to put the pressure in the, the best way, try to get the energy for me, stay positive, and it feels great to get the energy from everyone, especially in the opposite side of the world. So it's, it's very nice. Well, congratulations. We're going to let you go get ready. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao, tada. Nice to hear some words from Beatrice Hadaj Maya. A little bit of recovery, and then she'll be back on court for the mixed doubles. A live mixed doubles, that is. And that will be an exciting match of tennis. But before we do that, let's have a look at the match stats. Yelena, talk us through what are your thoughts for what happened in this match overall? Yeah, very interesting. Two hours of play and a similar first serve percentage from both actually first serve points uh, one as well. Uh, very similar. Uh, there is a difference in some of those unforced errors, but also Hadaj Maya had a lot more winners, especially off the forehand, 21, and that kind of did dictate a lot of the play and a lot of those big points, especially the tiebreaker, which I felt like was really important and really the key to this match. He hit a couple of massive winners in there. But break points one as well. Have a look at Hadaj Maya, five out of five, and that's what we talked about, the big points she played so well today, and that's why she was actually able to win and, and win in straight sets. So a tough fought match from both players and not too far away in about 20 minutes time we will have a live mixed doubles team Spain up against team Brazil looking forward to that one lots of tennis still to be played here at the 2024 20, United Cup 
So it's all tied up at the RAC Arena in Perth. Beatrice Haddad Meyer getting the job done for Team Brazil. They strike back and we're one apiece in the opening tie for the United Cup for this year. Thumbs up. What a season she had in 2023. And that is a great way to start. Straight sets.